Hello ladies, happy Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> oh, it's been a day. I am, I'm struggling today. I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. I've just been tired all day. Um, decided no makeup, haven't really brushed my hair and my puppies and wine shirt. Uh, so my energy is not going to be what it usually is, but I still wanted to stay consistent for you guys and pop on here and, um, follow through on my live commitment. And, um, today we're going to be talking about how to make kale taste amazing. So I know this is probably like so strange to all of you guys. And it was strange to me at first when I first kind of started playing around with it, but I'm sorry, I'm moving around. I can't, my dog's on the ground. Um, Nala say hi. Um, <laughs> I can't seem to get good light and not step on her. Um, but so let's see, probably four years ago, I was really getting into nutrition. I'd been getting into nutrition for a long time, but, um, I kind of was getting into more alternative nutrition. It might've been even longer. Gosh, maybe five years ago. And I was playing around with the idea of changing up breakfast because breakfast for so many of us is, you know, an English muffin or a bagel or cereal or oatmeal or, you know, those things that are, you know, not all of them are bad for you. None of them are bad for you, but they don't just, they don't give us the energy that we need to really start our day. Now I personally intermittent fast, we intermittent fast and trim. So I typically don't kickstart my first meal of the day until around 10 or 11 AM. But Still, the first thing that we put into our bodies is so, so important. And so I started playing around with something called rice bowls and I would cook up a green, some Japanese white rice and a fried egg. And I found I had so much more energy. I felt so good. I, I mean, it just, it, it started my day off right. It started my day off with a good mindset of, um, you know, this is, I'm putting something good and healthy into my body. So I've kind of stuck with it. And now on my regular carb days, rice bowls are hundred percent my go-to. So I change up the green from spinach to kale to cabbage to collard greens to, you know, sometimes I'll do mixed greens if I'm really lazy. So I, I, do, I change up the green, but for me, that's a really common breakfast in my house. And it's just, it's so tasty and it's so good. So that's what I'm gonna teach you guys today is how to make the kale taste amazing. So you really wanna eat it for breakfast. And uh, really quick for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kate Horning. I'm a chef and nutritionist. I'm the creator of A Healthy Passion, which is a meal planning software platform designed to help busy women like you guys stay on track with a healthy lifestyle. So you know exactly what to eat. Um, there are two rice bowl recipes in a healthy passion right now. So if you guys just search rice bowl, um, you can find the full recipe, but I'm going to show you how to make the kale today. Quick reminder that trim kicks off on Monday, um, Monday, October 7th. So if you guys want more structure, more accountability, if you want to know, oh geez, my dog just like freaked out. Did you have a bad dream? Oh, she tried to get a fly. Um, if you want more structure, more accountability, um, and the tools to get you the results that you want, definitely check it out. It's smofitness.com slash trim. Trim's transformed over a thousand women's lives and counting. So um, we're really excited. We've got a really great group kicking off with us on Monday. Um, and there's still time to register. So definitely check it out. Okay. I'm going to flip this little guy around. Let's see if it'll work. Maybe this is better. Um, okay. So kale, 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 kale. So kale is one of my favorite foods. Um, it's funny because when I get interviewed for like blog posts or on podcasts, people always ask me what my favorite meal is. And I will honestly tell you nine times out of 10, I say rice bowls because they are so dang good. And I'm going to go ahead and pull my computer up just to make sure I can see the cutting board. Um, because honestly, they're so satisfying. They're so filling and they're so healthy. I've got limoncello going on over here. I'm going to move that around. Um, and once you learn how to make it taste good, it makes a really big difference. Okay, cool. I can see the cutting board. Um, so the key in cooking kale is a couple of things. The first thing isn't going to be in how you prepare it, how you cut it. So I'm going to show you guys how I cut my kale to make it taste amazing. The second is going to be how we season it. So I'm going to share with you the, the things I use to season my kale. And the third is going to be in how we cook it. And this is a mistake a lot of people make in why their kale tastes like crap is they cook it incorrectly. So first things first, um, you wanna get nice kale that you've washed and dried very well. You don't want it to be wet because you don't want it to steam. Um, I buy organic kale personally, but again, buy what you can afford. Um, kale's awesome because a bunch of kale, and at my grocery store even the organic stuff is like a dollar for a bunch. So it's a really great inexpensive way to feed your family. Um, you know, again, if you can't find organic or can't afford the organic, regular kale I know is like a dollar a bunch. So definitely, definitely affordable and this whole recipe with the two eggs it serves two so it's two eggs a half cup of rice and a, a bunch of kale I mean it's like a, a two dollar meal 
and it's so healthy and so good for you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hold the kale at the bottom. I'm just wiping it off to make sure it's good and dry. I'm at the bottom of the stem and just pull the leaves in the opposite direction. This is how I do my kale salads too, but you just remove this because we're not gonna be cooking it long enough for it to actually get nice and tender using this part. So this little stem I'm gonna discard. Now, if you're doing organic kale or if you don't wanna waste this stem, you can go ahead and blend it in a smoothie. Um, you could juice it. I actually uh, chop these up and steam them and feed them to my dogs. So it's just a fun tip. So I'm just gonna do a few of these just so you guys can kind of get the idea. Make sure it's nice and dry. It actually has a little bit of dirt over here. I guess I didn't get it very clean. I just kind of rinse it quick, but so we're just gonna hold it at the bottom, pull in the opposite direction. And if you guys are like, how the heck do you have time to do this for breakfast? I prep all my breakfast ahead. So typically what I'll do is on Sunday or um, my day, like I kind of have time to get a lot of stuff done is Mondays. So what I'll do is I'll cook my kale up in advance and then I'll um, throw my rice in the rice cooker when I'm getting ready for the day. And then when it's time to eat, I'll just go ahead and dump everything into the skillet, reheat it, and then I'll go ahead and fry an egg up. So it takes me about two minutes to make breakfast, maybe three. So I prep everything. And this is nice because kale is a little hardier, so it does hold up quite well. Um, spinach, I don't love to reheat, so typically I'll just throw it in the skillet and wilt it right there. Cabbage is another one that really holds up well. Okay, that's a good start. So then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna move some of this aside, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I slice it. So what you wanna do with your kale is kind of get it into a nice little bundle, call it a little, like a cigar, roll it up, <laughs> um, and then get it nice and tight. And this is gonna make it really easy for you to be able to cut it. And then tip of the knife on the board. You guys can see I chipped my nail. I just finally got my nails all done up cute and I chipped that one yesterday. Um, but tip of the, the knife on the board, you want that nice little claw so you don't cut your fingers off. And then you're just gonna go ahead and run your knife through it. And you're gonna get these nice thin ribbons. And this takes practice, but this is one of those things that um, you can actually practice your knife skills and prep your breakfast at the same time. So you guys can see nice thin here. Nice thin ribbons, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in the skillet. I'm gonna do a couple more. And for those of you guys who need breakfast ideas, I'm gonna go ahead and share my list with you guys. This is for a healthy passion. You'll just go ahead and again, add this list to your cookbook. So it's really awesome, but I went ahead and put together a list of all my favorite breakfast recipes. For those of you who need inspiration. Okay, so we're gonna roll it up again, nice and tight. Thin slices. And the reason you want it thin is so number one, it cooks quickly. Um, and the reason you want it to cook quickly is so it stays nice and firm versus getting all mushy. And it also makes it a little bit less bitter. So kale can be kind of bitter. So I like to cut it nice and thin so it makes it tinier pieces of kale so it's more enjoyable tasting. Um, so those are the two reasons. So we're gonna roll this little guy up again. Tip of the knife on the board, thin slices. Doesn't have to be perfect. You guys noticed I was a little bit more diligent with my first batch. You can see I get a little lazy towards the end. No big deal. All right, let's do one more little bit here. Typically, again, I would do the entire bunch, but for time's sake, I wanna show you guys how to actually cook it from start to finish. So we'll just do enough for like one bowl. This is a pretty big bunch, so this would probably actually serve three or four portions. Okay, so that is going in. So now I'm just going to take my onion and my garlic. So those are the three ingredients that are gonna go in here, is the kale, the onion, and the garlic. So I've got some red onion here, you could use shallot, you could use white onion, you could use whatever you like. Again, you're probably thinking onion for breakfast, but I promise it's so, so good. And this one's already been kind of cut, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take it. You just wanna do a nice thin strip. Now my skillet isn't on yet, I went ahead and throw, threw the kale in there. But I haven't turned it on. I'm going to turn everything on at once. So that's probably a good enough onion. Although I like onion. So that's going to go in. And this is really going to make the kale taste amazing. So the onion's going to go in there. Last ingredient that's going to go in before we turn our kale on is some garlic. So I'm just going to take my head of garlic. If you guys are using the garlic in the jar, throw it away. Go get yourself a head of garlic. It makes all the difference in the world in the flavor of your food. And I'm going to show you guys, if you haven't learned from me yet, how I cut garlic. Because way easier than how most people cut garlic. It's a nice tight, oh, whoop, there we go. Okay, so you want two nice cloves of garlic. These are pretty big suckers. So all you're gonna do is take it, give it a whack, just like that. Peel off the outside peel. So this is a fresh clove of garlic. It's really delicious. 
Tip of the knife on the board again, push pull. We're just gonna do nice thin slices, nice little garlic chips. And the reason this is gonna be so delicious is because it's really gonna infuse a lot of garlic flavor into the kale. So if you went ahead and minced it up, a lot of times when you mince garlic, it can get lost in the dish or it can burn. And burned garlic tastes really bitter, so you don't want that. And honestly, I don't want it to get lost in the dish because I want my kale to taste like garlic so it doesn't taste like kale. So nice thin chips here. This is really gonna have a nice surface area and infuse that garlic into the dish. Okay, so there we go. This is gonna go on to medium heat. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off my hands really quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and while I'm waiting for that to warm up a little bit, I'm going to post, um, let's see, some tips for breaking your fast and some of my favorite recipes for breaking your fast as well. So you guys have those. So if you guys are wanting to improve what you eat to start your day, there's some tips for you there as well as a list of breakfast recipes I shared. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use some Celtic salt. If you guys aren't cooking with this yet, it's a game changer. I'll show you the bag. So if you wanna find it in the store, I get mine on Amazon. So I buy, I don't even know how big this is. I think it's a five pound bag or maybe more. Um, but this is the salt that I use. It's a coarse ground trace mineral rich salt comes from France. What's cool about it is it's, it comes from a live sea. You guys can see number one, it's super coarse pieces. Um, but it comes from a live sea, so there's a lot more flavor in the salt. It's going to allow you to use less salt because it has so much more flavor. Um, it's also super rich in trace minerals. So the problem with processed sodium is that our bodies actually need sodium, but we also need the minerals that come with natural sodium. So typically in the salt that you find in the sea, it's got a perfect balance. When we strip off all the minerals to make refined table salt, we lose those minerals and our body takes that sodium and it doesn't know what to do with it. Um, so you don't be afraid of salt, just high quality salt makes a big difference. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Now typically most recipes you'll see people say, oh, add a tablespoon of olive oil and then your kale. What that does is actually fries the bottom and steams the top. So what we're gonna do here is actually add a little bit of oil at a time, like I'm talking a quick drizzle across the pan, two to three times throughout the cooking. So it's still gonna be about a tablespoon, but what that's gonna do is actually coat the kale in that olive oil which has been infused with garlic and onion. So it's gonna make the kale taste so much better. Celtic salt's gonna go in, and then our red pepper flakes. And I like red pepper, so we're gonna do quite a bit here, but you can do a little or as much as you want. If you don't like it, you can omit it. If you wanna use black pepper, that's cool too. And then we're just gonna cook it. So I'm gonna turn this up, medium heat here, move everything around. Basically, you're just gonna cook it till the kale starts to look dry. We're gonna add another drizzle of olive oil, cook it again, and it's gonna take about four to five minutes. So if you guys have questions, I know there's quite a few of you on here live. If you guys have questions, feel free to post them. I can see them popping up. Um, some other tips for what to use this kale for. So if you make this and you're like, okay, I don't just want to eat it for breakfast, Kate, what else can I do? Um, first things first, you can type the word kale in the search bar and healthy passion and get a ton of awesome recipes. Uh, but this is really delicious if you just throw some chicken on the grill and serve it with this and some rice or I love to actually just for a super lazy dinner, just boil some lentil pasta and serve this kale so I've got my protein from the pasta. And that actually might be what I might do for dinner tonight because I don't have um, anything planned because I was developing recipes today, not today, yesterday, and my oven um, coil burned out. So I just had a new coil delivered today and I have to fix it so I can't really um, work on recipes without an oven. So I think I'm gonna change up my plans tonight and do this instead. Uh, so it's really good served with like lentil pasta. If you're making this for your kiddos, I suggest maybe grating some Parmesan cheese on top and serving it with whatever they enjoy. So it's kind of one of those things where you're making it something that they enjoy versus serving as is, and then eat it like this for you guys. Uh, let's see, what else? Of course, with rice, goes fantastically. Pork, uh, there's a recipe in A Healthy Passion that has pork and sweet potatoes, and then this kale, so that's a really good way to do it. Um, what else, what else? I'm gonna stuff it in a sweet potato. Um, honestly, this if you get it real crispy, so what I'll do is I'll saute it up and then throw it under the, like the into the 500 degree oven for a minute or two just to get it crispy. That's really delicious as like a topping on things. You can throw red beans in here, serve it with a little rice. So lots of ideas. Okay, you guys can see, garlic starting to cook, red pepper flakes are kicking my butt. <coughs> um, and I'm just kind of moving it around because I want everything to get mixed up nicely. I don't want my kale to get 
too crispy too fast. Okay, so I'm gonna let that cook like that for about 30 seconds to a minute. Show you guys my little assistant here for those of you who just hopped on. This is Nala. She's a psycho. Fun fact, my dogs eat a raw diet and they love kale. I don't saute it for them, I steam it for them, but I steam it with a little bit of um, Celtic salt and they go crazy for it. It's like a treat. So they eat all raw meat and then cook vegetables, of course. Okay, so that's looking good, smelling good. You guys can see the garlic's not burned, it's still nice and golden. You want it to get golden, essentially, and those onions are starting to get cooked down. You can also see this cooks down quite a bit, that's why I do a whole bunch for two people. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a little more olive oil. And I wanna know from you guys, do you enjoy this kind of stuff? Do you enjoy learning cooking tips and getting new recipe ideas? Are these videos you wanna see more of? I try to alternate like, so it's not too much cooking, but cooking's what lights me up and I love sharing how to simplify it with you guys. All right, so that's looking good. So I'm gonna give it a stir. Again, we don't want anything to burn, so you wanna keep a close eye on it. looks pretty it's pretty easy to do I mean this really doesn't take a lot of time or a lot of energy and honestly one thing I like to do is when I prepare this I'll actually go ahead and do two bunches and I'll cook one bunch and then while I'm sitting here waiting I'll cut up the next bunch for like a couple days from now because kale is so hardy that it actually can hold up really well everything already cut in a ziploc bag in the fridge for about five days so I'll go ahead and prep it all at once and then I'll cook it a couple times Alright, looking good. So I'm going to add one more little drizzle of oil and let it cook another minute or two and it'll be done. Pretty easy. And again, that's about a tablespoon total of oil. I know it seems like a lot more, but not a lot's coming out. You <coughs> can put a little too much red pepper flake. No, it's going to be delicious. I love red pepper. I like heat. You guys like red pepper flakes? Let me see some little hearts if you're a fan of red pepper flakes. Anyone like them? No one likes red pepper flakes. Bummer. Well, almost all of my recipes use them, or a lot of them do. Um, if, also, if you guys are around tomorrow at 5, I'm going to be doing a sneak peek into my pantry. I'm not even going to plan it. I'm just going to open it up and show you guys um, what's, what I keep on hand. And then I'm going to go through uh, how I created the pantry system for a healthy passion, which is 16 items that I use over and over again. That way I'm not buying something and using it once and then having it take up space in my house. So I'm a big fan of like the minimalist pantry. So I'm going to tell you guys what 16 items you want to keep on hand that you'll use over and over again. Okay, so there you guys have it. That is how my kale is supposed to look. So you want it to wilt down pretty well. Um, you want it to get nice and tender. The best way to know if it's done is to give it a little taste. So I'll just reach in here. It's a big, big hunk, but give it a taste. See if it needs any more salt. See if it needs any more red pepper flakes. Honestly, it tastes so dang good. What I love about it is when you cook it like this, it gets real nutty. Again, that garlic gets kind of sweet because it's in such large, thin slices that it doesn't get bitter. So it's kind of this almost sweet element. Those onions get nice and caramelized. And then you get these intense pops of salt flavor, which is so good. So I'm gonna go ahead and so it doesn't continue cooking, move it aside. And I think, I, like I mentioned, I'm gonna do the lentil pasta tonight for dinner in an hour or so, so I have a nice meal. And I hope this was super helpful. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, post them in the comments. Um, don't forget to check out my list. You'll just click it, you can add it to your cookbook, you can reference it whenever you need breakfast ideas. Um, if you guys make this kale, tag me, post a picture and tag me, I always love to see you. You guys are cooking my recipes. And I hope you guys have an awesome rest of the night. I'm gonna get some work done and cozy up with a little cup of tea and maybe watch a movie or something. I just I think I'm gonna take it easy tonight. So anyhow, I will see you guys tomorrow. I don't know what is up with the light in my house, jeez. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow and I hope you guys have an awesome night. We'll talk soon, okay, bye.